once again just want to say thank you to all of you for being here to celebrate the life of this great woman, Betty Jean McElroy. And I hope I turn it over to everyone.
Let's all give thanks and shake. All right. Now we will have acknowledgments. Barbara Rashad. sense of humor. I love her just as I know this family loves my mother. I want to pick up on a theme here. Um, legacy. In Yoruba culture, which is from West Africa, which most of, most of us, our ancestors came from, they say that um, God doesn't judge us just by our deeds. Mm. It judges us by the deeds of our children. Mm -hmm. That we, we are evaluated by what we left for them. And seeing the members of this family, <coughs> that beautiful song, that Dindara song, from the ancestors, the poems, the love here. You can see that Miss Betty was a great leader. A mother's a leader. Mother's a business woman. They're counselors. A mother is a psychologist. A mother is the police. Right? If you grew up like me and Baba Lassam did, it was the final word. If I says that our children will be the light that we left behind, and this place is lit up. And I know how proud Mama Betty was every time I seen at Alonzo's house looking at all her grandchildren, their great grandchildren, and just how this family had grown and blossomed. I remember how, how amazed she was when Alonzo grew dreadlocks. He said, I just can't believe your hair could grow like that. <laughs> <laughs> but she was always open to new ideas. She embraced her family's reconnection with their African ancestry, and it blossomed. I think Mama Betty would be very, very happy today. And she would smile today. Also, as in Yoruba culture, we know that when we come here, we're on an errand. Heaven is our home, and earth is the marketplace. They sent us down here to do some things, to accomplish some things to see some things and to leave some things. And Mama Betty did all that. I want to leave you with one short um, scripture from Esheifa in uh, Oyeku Meji. It talks about the time when we will leave here. But if I says, a mother will all fiercely defend their children. It said, if you mess with a puppy, you will feel the point of the dog's teeth. A mother will put something on you. Mm. <laughs> touch her child. It said, a ram, the mother of a ram, will always defend her child. She will fight to the death. And if I go further to say, even the dead mother of a ram, if you get close to her children, you will still feel the points from her heart. Mm. Our mothers never leave us. They love us the same way God loves us in an eternal manner. We'll always be bound to them. I give you my love, my prayers, and condolences. But there's going to be a celebration in heaven. Because all my petty ancestors are going to be there for them. And they're going to be there for you. May God bless you. May your ancestors bless you.
We will now have the reading of the obituary. Good morning, everyone. Y'all be patient with me. Y'all know my grandma was my girl. I just want to speak from the heart for a second and say that my grandmother always referred to me as my mind. Always. I was always with her. If you saw my grandma, you saw me. Y'all know that was my girl. And I just want to say that I'm sad to see her go, but I'm happy to know that I will always have her guidance and her protection. <laughs> because she's my ancestor now. And it gives me comfort because I know my grandma never told me no. So I know I got somebody watching my back now. Miss mm -hmm. right, Betty, Mama, our grandma, and greeting, was born April 10, 1937, to the late Benjamin McAlpine and the late Ann Eliza Pickens McAlpine, Burroughs in Greensboro, Alabama. She left home at 16 to live with her older sister, Louise Tubbs, helping in her household until she was 21 when she began to sire her children. Betty had numerous employments while living in New Orleans. She was a nursing aide at a home health facility and a housekeeper for several major hotels in New Orleans. She later became a housekeeper supervisor at the Hilton in New Orleans. Betty became a private sector domestic worker and then eventually retired. Betty re relocated to Austin, Texas with her daughter Dion and granddaughter Saida after being displaced by Hurricane Katrina. She eventually received her wings at home from a brief illness. Betty also is preceded in debt by her six siblings, Louise Tubbs, Floyd McAlpine, Mary Delandro, Matilda Green, Rachel Jackson, and Elizabeth Liz McAlpine. Betty was a God-fearing woman with her religious experience. First at the Macedonia God in Christ Church in New Orleans, then becoming baptized at New Hope Baptist Church along with her three children, Alonzo, Dion, and Donna. She was a member and usher at Zion Hill Baptist Church under the leadership of Reverend Sidney Joshua and an honorary member of True Vine Missionary Baptist Church under Reverend C. Donald C. John Jock Sr., both in New Just to speak on that, y'all, it's such a circle because my grandmother was an usher. She was an usher for real. So to see us in our white, like, that's amazing. That, that's really something special. Okay, where I was at. <laughs> After relocating to Austin, Texas, Betty became an East Side Baptist Church member under Pastor Leland Dandridge. She was a member of the Eastern Star Chapter in New Orleans and the Louisiana Freedmen's Usher National Association. Betty was a woman who embraced education as a must-have. For all, despite her limited education of not going past the third grade, I also want to speak to this. I remember going to the public library with my grandmother to make sure that she got her high school diploma equivalency period. and that that made me hmm. like furious with my academics because my grandmother at her age was determined to get her education i gotta get mine you know right. so i just want to speak to that too <laughs> betty as a woman who embraced education as a must-have for all despite her limited education of not going past the third grade she began her advocacy for education as a parent volunteering at her two daughters elementary school Quickly escalating as a parent liaison at the school, Betty ran for office as an area parent liaison for the Title I chapter of Orleans Parish School District. She won and held the position for two decades, traveling across the country in conferences to share what she had learned with other parents in her district. Betty was inspired to attempt to continue her education at the local public library in New Orleans to receive her high school equivalency diploma. Betty's continuous accomplishments continue to date with the Certificate of Achievement Award as Vice President Shadow, Man 5, Man 2. She was a force to be reckoned with for continuous support to helping others in engagement. Betty remained inspiring to all until her death from illness. She came across with words of encouragement to family, friends, and anyone hearing her inspirational motivations. She leads to cherish her legacy to her three children, Alonzo McAlpine, Ifuru, Dion McElpine and Donna Michael Green Sr. Betty has nine grandchildren, seven great grandchildren, and a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. <laughs>
<laughs> but during my cousin Allison's wedding, I got a chance to spend a lot of time with my grandma just escorting her from here to there. And I felt like for the first time, I really connected with my grandma. Like, we really was jolting the whole time. She is a whole, a whole key. She stayed. Well, she had the pettiest of little jokes, and she was always throwing shade, and I loved that, you know? And the last time I got a chance to speak with her, see her on FaceTime, I was able to sing for her, and she called me her singing boomy. That's my singing boomy. That's my singing baby. And I'm like, she, she finally sang it. Amen.
unto man wants to die. The but after this, the judgment. The judgment. Amen. Amen. See, years ago, uh, you used to hear old people say, I've died one time. I ain't gonna die no more. Right. I had to learn out what that means. I had to learn. I had to learn. Amen, I had to learn what that, that, what that means. Amen. I had to learn what that means. So as I got older and began to learn about who Jesus Christ was, All right. I understood the meaning. Yeah. So just for briefly, for just for a very short brief time, I want if I take a theme, I want to talk from this theme, life. Simple life. Life. The minute that you come into the world and take your first breath, until the minute you take your last breath, everything in between those two breaths is what we call life. All right. That's right. No matter how high or low, no how big, how rich, how poor, everything we do from the minute we take that first breath until we take that last breath is called life. Now, what we do with that life is left up to us. Amen, amen. No matter how much accolades you give a person. The evidence is in the life she lived. Amen. I can't preach her life. She already lived. Amen. Amen. And I heard the word legacy repeated over and over and over again. So whatever that she taught while she was on the faith of this person, is the life that you will remember her by. Right. Can't nobody take away what Ben has already done. Amen. Amen. That was a songster that wrote a song years ago, May the life that I live speak for me. Amen. Amen. And it went on and said, when I'm resting in my grave, there's nothing there can be saved. So may the life that I live speak for me. So, what was our life was intended for? Two, there were two things that our life was created for. Two. Service to God is one of them. And to serve mankind. Amen. Worship God, serve mankind. Jesus made that traveling when he was getting ready to go back to his father. And he told him to do unto you and do unto thee as I have done all for unto you. Love ye one another. That's the greatest commandment. Above everything else in our life, nothing else compared to that we love each other. Amen. And love does not just fall from the lip like dews of water. Love shows action. You can't say you love me and won't feed me when I'm hungry. You can't say you love me and won't chastise me when I'm wrong. All right, brother. All right. Hello. So apparently, when I when I heard the young man talk about Sister Betty Jean, apparently that, that was some love going on Amen. around her home. Because she taught you about the thing that you was going to encounter in this thing that we call life. Amen. It's not about how much money you got in your pocket. Mm -hmm. All the money is good. Yeah. It's not about how big of a 
how you live on the hill. Although, like, uh, on the how the hill is great. It don't matter. But the Bible says to us, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of its righteousness. And all of these things shall be added unto thee. Amen, brother. In order to have a good life, not a prosper. I see a lot of people think prosper and good the same thing. I beg the difference. All right, brother. Prosper meaning that you're gaining, gaining. There are a lot of rich millionaires who have a good life. They have prosper, but no good life. There are millionaires that commit suicide. Because they don't have a good life. But they are prosper. And I to have a good life. The key to having a good life is for seek ye first the kingdom of God. When you get Jesus in your life. Amen, brother. That's it. Jesus. When you get Jesus in your life. Amen. Because everything else that happened in your life, once you get Jesus, mm -hmm. you got all your needs. <laughs> everything else comes second. All right, brother. Everything else comes second. All right. So I'm telling you, in your life, the Bible tells to live is for Christ. All right. To be out from the body is to be present Amen. with the Lord. So it's evident that Sister Ben had lived a good life. Amen. It is shown in the reflectivity of her children. So no matter where y'all go in this world, remember the teaching of your mom, your grandma, and your great grandma. And above everything else that she taught you, she taught you about Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the one thing that can give you a good life. Amen. I'm asking any of you here today that are outside of the ark of saints. You can take Sister Betty's life and tell God, I want to be saved. I want to follow after your word. I want to follow after your command. Yeah. Create within yourself life. Because mm -hmm. the Bible tells us it is appointed unto us once. Once. Amen. To die. Mm -hmm. after that. And after that, it is judgment. Amen. Everything you have done in this life from the first minute you took your breath to the last minute you took your breath, you're going to be judged. Whether it's good or whether it's bad. Got to be. Whether you know Christ or whether you don't know him. But just like me, I'd rather live my life believing that Christ exists right. yeah. than to live my life mm. not believing he's the only exists mm. and die and find out mm. who you exist. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's all about our life. What are you planning to do with your life? Let Sister Betty's life be an example for your life. Everything that she taught you, everything you know that she has tried to teach you, put it in practice. Good. All right, brother. My father had not too long ago. All right. And every time somebody see me, they said, as long as you live, my dad was named Alfonso. All right, amen. They said, as long as you live, Alfonso will never die. So at this time, I'm saying to you, live the life that Sister Betty had instilled into you, God. All right, God. And if you do that, when the judgment comes, everything's going to be all right. Amen. Because we've got to meet our Creator 
that will lead our Creator one day. Amen. I'm waiting. Well, if you believe it or not, mm -hmm. we got to meet our Creator one day. Amen. This is our prayer that God continue to bless you, God, and that God continue to be with you, and God continue to strengthen you through your hour of bereavement. Amen. Amen. We're now turning back over into the hand of the announcer. Not 
out in, in vain. Mm -hmm. My friend, why it has become my sad duty, and death once more has invaded our rank and removed from this walk of life our beloved sister. Mm -hmm. Her soul, having departed to dwell in the undiscovered country from whom born no traveler returned, it has become our sad duty to commit her body to the earth, to the ground, to the grave. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. In our inspired privilege to command, commend her soul to our maker, father, and redeemer. In the confident hope of the coming again of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The resurrection of the body from the grave and the joy of life reserved for the children of the light and the realms of glory. At this time, let's complete our committal service.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get into your car, please well, come to the service on Journey from here Texas, so to Burrow Cemetery. Right. Please put on your lights and your flash, and you all will be following the hurt. If you all just go ahead on now, this time, ladies and gentlemen, Look, say hi to Uncle. Hey. Say hi, Uncle. You are too beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Check it, check it. 